Good morning, good evening, and good day. Welcome to Attack Power Gaming. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to be hopping into a controversial topic of which is the stronger faction, the Axis or the Allies. So if you enjoy this content, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel for more Steel Division 2 content. Let's dive right in. Alrighty, folks, before we get far into this video, I want to first preface that this is definitely a controversial topic, and a lot of the things I'm going to talk about today are extremely generalized. Uh, on both factions, there's, of course, divisions that buck the trend. There are divisions that don't have the weaknesses and strengths I'm going to talk about. So please don't assume that my statements are completely blanket and cover every single division in both factions. I'm going to make some general comments about both factions that are just again to generally categorize it for people. I'm going to first say that neither faction is better than the other. At this point in the game, the factions are actually pretty balanced. They both have their strengths and weaknesses, but you can play either the allies or the axis very successfully and win consistently. So don't think that one faction is significantly better than the other at this point. At times that has been true, but at this point in the game, I don't believe that one is significantly better than the other. It really comes down to personal preference. So we're going to hop in here to go over the different strengths and weaknesses of the two uh, of the two factions in general. Now, for the allies, I'm actually going to break it up a little bit into the Soviets and the Western allies because they're just very distinctly different. The Axis, on the other hand, most of the most of them are German. Yes, there's Romanians and Hungarians as well, uh, but there's only a few divisions that are those. There's only three Romanian divisions and two Hungarian divisions, and a lot of them use German equipment anyway, so they tend to follow a similar trend. Yes, they are different. They're distinctly different, and the Finnish. I did forget the Finnish. Excuse me. They have two factions themselves, and while these are definitely distinctly different from their German counterparts, they do use a lot of German material, and a lot of times they're just not enough to really say that the axes are different because of those so just understand i will break the western allies out western allies being the americans the british the french and break those out from time to time when they significantly are different from the soviets so let's start here with our allies and one of their main strengths and this is for both the western and eastern allies is the speed of their transport specifically so the allies enjoy these extremely fast transports that are just so much quicker than the axis on a general sense their motorcycles and this is the same for again the western are go 100 kilometers an hour the german ones only go 90 it, it just there's just a 10 kilometer di kilometer per hour difference these guys will get to the front before the axis will consistently all the time another another unit that is just faster is the jeep they get the jeep that goes 95 miles kilometer per hour it it's just faster so they are just going to get to the front line. Most of the time, the Germans are using their little uh, Hertz, I believe it's called, and that goes 80 kilometers per hour. So it, it's just, they're just slower. So the Allies enjoy a significant bonus in transport speed in a general sense. Now, transports such as the Studebaker are actually about the same, if not a little bit slower than the German counterparts. So the German, the actual infantry transports, Studebakers are a little bit slower. The Allies have a lot of s slower half-track transports and stuff as well. So in terms of the infantry transport, the Axis often have a little bit of an edge. But in terms of the faster stuff that you're sending early in the game to get places, the Allies have a significant advantage and will beat the Axis to the front. That's a major advantage for them. The next big difference between the Axis and the Allies is in the general makeup of their infantry. The Allies as a whole generally have much stronger CQC infantry. In other words, close combat infantry. You'll find there's often a lot bigger variety and wealth of options for the Allies over the Axis. The Al Al uh, Soviets specifically often have the Avtomachiki, which are just a group of submachine, a squad of submachine gunners. They sometimes will get Sapris, which are their pioneers, which are strong. They're, the Sapris are stronger than pioneers, which are the German equivalent. These are just better units. They have better weapons than the pioneers do. Then they also get the Tanko Desaniki on, in some of the divisions. And these are just really strong CQC infantry with Molotov cocktails. A lot of them get those as well. So the Allies just generally get stronger CQC infantry. The Western Allies a little less so. Theirs are not as strong, but their infantry just tend to match up a little bit better close range. The Americans have a lot of semi-automatic rifles and stuff, which just makes them stronger at closer range. So the Russians specifically, but also the Western Allies, 
tend to enjoy more advantage at close range than the axis. When I mean close range, I mean forest fights and things like that. The advantage for the axis, on the other hand, is they have significantly, generally, and again, everything I say is the general comment. I, I don't want to have to keep saying generally. The axis have more long range based infantry. So they will generally do better at range. For example, the most the most common German infantry, the Panzer Grenadier, has double machine gun and it's the MG forty two. That's the other big advantage for a German and Axis infantry in general is they have access to the strongest machine gun in the game, which is the MG forty two. Both in the actual support tab, the heavy the heavy MG-42, the full-on, it was the Horsch, not the Hertz, excuse me. The MG-42 big one, and then we have the light MG-42 that the infantry use, and this is the best light machine gun in the game. So the Axis generally tend to experience more advantage at a range, i.e. firing at troops over open ground or, you know, any anything over 100 meters. These guys are going to have the advantage. And for the most part, the Axis are going to enjoy an advantage at range. So that's that's their advantage. But they're going they're generally weaker at close range. They'll have a couple Pioneers. They get the Sturm Pioneer, which it's a flamethrower, but it's a weak flamethrower squad. The, uh, the allies get better versions of these flamethrowers very often. So that, that's the difference there. So that's the big difference in the infantry is that basically I, I feel that the allies tend to be stronger at close range. And again, there are divisions that certainly buck this trend for the Axis. They have some divisions that are very strong at close range, just as the Allies have some divisions that are very strong at longer range. But on the whole, that's what you're going to find. Our next big difference comes in the armor. German tanks, for the most part, have longer ranges. So I'm talking mostly medium tanks here. Their ranges are 1,750 meters, the Stug and the Panzer IV. While the Soviet tanks and Shermans only have a 1,500 meter range. So this is a significant difference. Mo for the most part, as the Axis, you're going to be outranging your ally opponent. On the flip side, the allied armor often has more ar like actual armor, I should say. Their tanks have more actual armor, generally speaking. Shermans have 100 millimeters of front armor. Even the weak T-34, this is the bad version of the T-34 technically, has 90 millimeters armor, which is 15 millimeters more than the Panzer IV. It's equal to the Stug III, but the Sherman has 10 millimeters more. So that, that increased range can be made up with the fact that the Allies tend to get a little bit more actual armor in their armor. Next difference, the Axis guns, and probably due to this armor difference, tend to have a higher penetration. Generally speaking, mo all the German medium tanks have about 135 millimeter penetration, while most of the Axis, I mean, excuse me, most of the Allies, Shermans uh, are 90 millimeters, and T-34s are 100. They tend to have slightly lower penetrations on the whole. Now, they equal out because the Germans have lower armor, so the Axis have generally lower literal armor values, while their tanks have higher penetration versus the higher armor of the Allied tanks. So this is just something to keep in mind. Generally speaking, too, I should say the Germans, just any sort of gun in general, like non-infantry guns, so anti-tank guns, their anti-air guns, so pack 40s these things generally have higher penetration values than the equivalents for the Soviets slash, Amer uh, slash Western allies. So the Soviets have their ZIS 3s, they only pen 105, the allies have 57 mils or 6 pounders, and these go about 110 millimeters of penetration, while on the flip side we have the Pac 40s, which do 145 millimeters. So the Axis tend to have higher penetration values on many of their weapons than the Allies. Same even with like the anti-air, some Soviet divisions have the 85 mil, which has lower penetration than the 88 mil here for the Axis. So you're going to find generally higher gun penetration values for the Axis side. Moving on, the Axis have much stronger armored cars when they have them. When the Axis have access to, armor, access to armored cars, they tend to be stronger. They get a lot of the auto cannon stuff. They get a lot of these fast, very fast moving armored cars that they can use, especially in the recon tab. We do see these sort of things on the allied side, especially with the Americans with their M8s and things of that nature and the British with their stag hounds and such. So those can be quite strong. But for the Soviets, they really just kind of have their BA-10s and SU-57s, I believe they are. 
and those are while very solid don't match up as well as the axis armor cards do i can't find one at the moment they don't match up as well so that's just something we saw here's a ba10 these don't match up they do great work they can certainly kill axis Axis armor cards, but those auto cannon cars that the Germans and Axis have just tend to, are very strong. They perform very well for their cost, so it's something to be aware of. In general, the Allied infantry is a little bit cheaper, and of course, I'm on a division where the infantry is, of course, not cheaper. But actually, I mean, I should say it still kind of is. Even though Strafniki are 40 points, you get a 20 man squad, so it's actually quite cheap for the number of troops you get. A lot of the Allied infantry squads just seem to be slightly more are more aggressively costed, slightly cheaper, living in that 20 to 25 point zone, while the Axis infantry often live in the 25 to 30 point zone for most of their troops. Panzer Grenadiers, 30 points. Uh, you get down to Grenadiers, those are 20 points, but they're a weak squad and they don't match up well against the 20 point version for the Allies, which are their Strelke or Gavardia or whatever they happen to be. A lack for uh, the a lack for the allies they generally don't have any sort of heavy armor especially the western allies the soviets some of them have the is2s but they're so expensive you can't really effectively use them because they're just so expensive they lack significant heavy armor the t3485 is the best thing they've got in terms of heavy armor and it's not really heavy heavy it's not heavy like the germans heavy armor is the germans have access to the tigers and the panthers which while are, they're expensive, they're not absurdly expensive. IS-2s are really expensive. King Tigers are really expensive. But Tigers and Panthers are costed well enough, especially the Tiger, are costed well enough that they're at least usable in a game. Where the Allies really don't have access to heavier armor like this. They have some ISUs, things like that can fill that gap. But for the most part, and that's not a huge weakness for the Allies. It's just something to be aware of. The thing on the flip side, though, is the Axis generally lack lighter tanks that fill a good close quarters combat role. So these T-3476s do pretty well at close range. You don't want your tanks to generally be close range, but the Allies, the T-34s, the Shermans, they do function relatively well at close range. On the flip side, the Axis really don't have things like this. They have the stolen versions of their own, of the Allies stuff, but for the most part, their Stug 3s, their Panzer 4s, they do not do well at close range. That's not where they're designed to fight. So that, that can be a, a pain for the Axis, and that's why they have to make up with it in their, arm, in their armor cars and things like that to make up for that lack of CQC range. Generally speaking, the air tabs, air, air is kind of balanced on either side. You end up with some medium fighters for both. The Axis have the Falcon Wolves and things. The Allies have Spitfires, LA-7s, things like this that give you those medium resistance fighters. The Allied bombers tend to have a little bit higher resili resiliency, specifically the Soviets with their IL line, just IL-4s, IL-2s. These are all very good resistance, resilience bombers. The Axis have access certainly to higher resilience bombers such as the JUs. Uh, uh, I don't think the Dorians, I think they have medium. medium. Some of their bombers tend to be medium, but for the most part, the Allies bombers are almost all, they're almost all uh, high, very good resilience. You can see here the HE-111, this has a very good resilience as well. But for the most part, I the, the Allies seem to have a little bit more resilience in the bomber tab. Artillery-wise, the Axis tend to have a bit, little bit stronger of artillery. They often get access to 150 millimeter artillery. They often have access to better 100 millimeter artillery in the SK-18. They get some half-track north. Now, the Western Allies have very strong artillery. The Western Allies have a lot of radio mortars, a lot of radi just really strong 200 millimeter howitzers for some of the Americans. They just tend to have some very strong artillery. Those we the Western Allies, the Soviets often are a little bit lacking especially in heavy artillery they don't have very much but make up for it for having a lot more off map very often they have the more powerful 152 millimeter off map artillery that the axis really don't have access to they have a kind of weird gap in there so the allies often enjoy a much stronger set of off map artillery for that aa is sort of equal the allies have bofers and things to fill that medium aa role if you don't know about AA, go watch that video on how not to suck. So the Allies have that medium, a lot more medium AA. The Axis certainly get access to that with their 37 millimeter flak guns and things. So these tend to be equal. 
as I said before, the anti-tank tabs, the axes tend to have higher penetration, so a generally more effective, more dangerous anti-tank tab, but the allies often have a lot more variety and things to use in there, lighter stuff to ambush and, and stuff like that. And for the most part, that's about the main differences. So, as I said before, the Axis and Allies are two very equal factions in terms of which one is better. It really comes down to your playstyle. Me personally, I only played the Axis for like the first two years of playing this game. Only because I like the way their units are set up. I just like the Axis units better. I like how they play better. So I really only played them, but I strongly suggest that you play both. I really personally too branched out into playing more ally divisions. A, because they have strengths. They definitely have a lot of strengths that the Axis don't. And even more so, if you want to be a primarily Axis player, you need to know how to beat the allied divisions. You need to play them and see, okay, when I play this division or when I play this faction, what do I feel like I'm lacking? Like when I play the Axis, I often feel like I'm lacking in CQC infantry. I often feel, even when I build my deck to have some, I often feel compared to the allied CQC infantry, I just feel like it's left a little wanting. On the flip side, when I'm playing the Axis, I always feel like my armor has a leg up on the opponent for the most part over the allies and again that's a personal feel it's not necessarily true and it's very division dependent you can have very strong armored divisions and very close range divisions on the axis it's really which ones you come down to but in a general sense if you're playing a large variety of one of these factions you're going to start to get these trends out of those out of those factions so i hope this video was helpful i hope that helped you guys try out some try out maybe the faction that you don't usually play and try to experiment with them a little bit. If you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel for more Steel Division 2 content. Have an awesome day.